I'm joined today with my very good friend Madhul Sharma from 3CDN, joining us live from India. <laughs> Madhul and I have had a chance to work together at Avixa uh, on the board of directors for a number of years, and I've gotten to know he's an incredibly kind, compassionate person, but we also do business, which is so great. Radul, thank you for joining me from India. Happy to be here, Jeff. Thank you so much. Awesome. I think um, for people who are watching this uh, recording in particular are going to say, who's Radul and what is 3CDN? If you could just share in a nutshell, what is the, what is your, a little bit about you and a little bit about your business? Well, I'm Radul Sharma and I run a design and consulting setup by the name 3CDN uh, in India. We focus predominantly in the corporate or enterprise space. For the last 14 years of our existence, we have delivered several complex and large scale projects and across different regions. I'm also an active industry volunteer. My years of volunteer work gave me an opportunity to be on the board of Avixa. More than anything, I think uh, what, what this uh, stint has done is given me a platform to connect with amazing people like you, Jeff. Well, thank you for that. You are you are too kind. <laughs> I remember the first day you came to a board meeting, and I had a chance to meet you. And uh, I think it was Bharat who who walked you know walked me up and said, "Hey, meet Radul. He's a new board member." And I was like, "Wow, this is great." You know, I really uh, I really enjoyed um, our first dinner that we had, and then you know subsequent meetings have always been fun. And I know you're currently serving as well, so thank you for your continued service to our industry. Um, I, it, it goes without saying, for those of you who don't know what a board member does, there's lots of time uh, outside of board meetings and of just passion and building. So thank you for that. You and I have had a chance to have lots and lots of conversations about the state of collaboration, the state of video conferencing and what you know large multinational global companies are doing. Uh, what has got you excited right now from a technology standpoint um, and and what are you seeing customers navigate as you're moving forward in the projects that you're working on? Yeah, so uh, what what pandemic did, Jeff, uh, was that the, it make, basically accelerated the rate of adoption of UCC tools, uh, and it has been significant. As an industry, we have done really well to meet uh, the rising customer demands. Uh, but what I see right now, uh, the market is extremely segmented uh, on the collaboration front on, or on the UCC front. Interoperability uh, uh, is kind of inefficient and to a great extent uh, insufficient uh, 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 in terms of the way it is uh, creating problems for our customers. Uh, we have a part of uh, a landscape of market which is dominated by teams and you still have Zoom uh, hovering around. So interoperability becomes kind of is, is one of the bigger challenges we are uh, facing uh, as part of our designs. Uh, what UCC on the cloud or on the software has done is it has kind of given us an ability to have a feature or a unique uh, outcome by means of just a firmware update. It's not really a factor of hardware anymore. And that's a very unique uh, way to look at uh, AV for, for industry colleagues like us. Uh, the other aspect about collaboration and conferencing has been the advent of AI. Uh, it was the early days for all of us in terms of what AI is going to do for uh, our industry. But uh, increasingly, what we are clearly witnessing here is the fact that uh, these AI tools allow us to work faster and better. And with, uh, again, increasing updates coming in from Teams and Zoom, uh, what we are noticing here is uh, clients are kind of really, really benefiting from the way we are uh, approaching work. Last but not the least, the rate of adoption of conferencing since pandemic accelerated purely because uh, it today uh, kind of uh, uh, directly impacts customers' business and their workflow. We have a hot seat on the table today. So we are a very important stakeholder uh, for CTOs and CIOs, and those conversations are extremely important. So that's a very welcome change, I would say, for our industry as a whole. You know, it's interesting when you talk about the interoperability of the rooms, they, they have to be able to connect to anybody's platform. Uh, and there are, you know, the three or four or five platforms of choice, you know, on any given day. It's got to be simple. It's got to be easy. And you think about those those rooms in particular, from the huddle room all the way up to the boardroom. 
each of them have some unique propositions. And the technology has finally gotten to a place where, for the most part, it's very easy to navigate. But the rooms themselves are very different. Um, you know, you can see a room which is just very, you know, I'm going to put my laptop in and work and off I go, all the way to a high-end room where there's lots of consideration into the style and the aesthetic of the space. Uh, I know you have been engaged in a lot of those rooms that have had really high style and aesthetic. What are you seeing with style and aesthetic on the projects that you're working on? And how um, has that intersected in the technology considerations of the things that you had to do? Well, Jeff, uh, the outcomes attached to AV uh, have a big bearing on the environment in which we install them. Uh, the close coordination that we do with interior designers and architects is fundamental to make sure that the environment is appropriate for uh, uh, the AV installs. We focus heavily on acoustics, we focus heavily on lighting uh, to make sure that uh, the conferencing experience is a 10 on 10. Uh, as we progress through the journey of coordinating these elements, aesthetics plays a very important role. Uh, earlier, uh, the aesthetic sense of a room uh, had a higher importance for rooms which are used by CXOs, uh, the readership rooms like cabins, boardrooms, uh, so on and so forth. Off late, the fact that uh, you, the, the interior designers are trying to create an environment which is exciting enough for uh, employees to come back to office, to that end, the aesthetic sense uh, along with technology has a very important uh, role to play. And a lion's share of our time, Jeff, is going into making sure that we are coordinating those cameras, microphones, loudspeakers, even displays, uh, along with uh, where the where the architect wants to position them. While doing so, we have a lot of uh, uh, difficult conversations with uh, interior designers to make sure that we are not compromising on any of the outcomes that we control. Uh, yeah. Camera height, uh, display position, making sure that uh, the readability is appropriate, the display size is appropriate, so on and so forth. And that's 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 kind of has resulted in, 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 in a situation where we are uh, spending a lot of time with them to find unique ways to make sure that the aesthetical sense of the space aligns with uh, the technology outlook that we carry. Yeah, I think that conversation that happens to make sure that the aesthetic aligns with the tech. And in some cases, it creates a unique challenge. Uh, where does the tech fit in this aesthetic? I, uh, a message we frequently hear from a lot of people is the earlier you're engaged in the conversation, the better in terms of the ability to represent what's possible, but also to deliver on the aesthetic goal that's uh, desired for the space. And there's certainly no shortage of customers that fall into that category. Uh, you know, is there, maybe not necessarily with talking about a specific customer, I know we've worked on a few of these together. What was a particular challenge that you faced that you were able to overcome through great collaboration with an interior design team? Yeah, so uh, the space that we worked together, uh, Jeff, was a large executive cabin. And uh, what happened there was uh, none of the video bars that we have in the market were able to satiate the requirement of camera pickup or uh, for that matter, uh, uh, the pickup of microphone. And we were kind of looking at an approach where we were going to touch multiple surfaces at the same time. One of the proposals, the initial proposals we gave to the interior designer and the client was to have a ceiling microphone. We had distributed loudspeakers. We had an extremely large screen uh, as part of the design. And as we started moving forward with the conversation, uh, the coordination started becoming extremely difficult. Uh, thanks to my conversation with you and Paul, uh, I had certain reference images with me, uh, which uh, I was able to put up during one of the conversations with the leadership on the client side. And they said, why don't you work around it? Why don't you kind of use wall as the only surface and, and, and create an experience for us, which can work for us. It was uh, a very unique uh, and a custom install for us where we were able to embed uh, uh, microphones into the wall. We were able to use uh, a, a, a Poly E70 camera uh, alongside the large screen. And while doing all of that, uh, we were able to make sure that we were able to bring that aesthetic sense around it. Yeah. As it happens, Jeff, right? It's, it's, it's kind of, you should know uh, where to stop. You should know your boundaries. You should know your limits. In this case, uh, we were uh, kind of uh, uh, flirting with uh, the boundary of uh, being an interior designer in terms yeah. of look and feel. 
And while we were proposing these ideas, there was a sense of uh, 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 concern from the interior designer that, uh, yeah, we like these ideas, but can't we build it on our own in India? I mean, so we engaging local contractors, general contractors. Uh, but as we started conversing with them, started giving references, we got a lot of collaterals from your team to justify why we should have something coming from the factory and from a company which can basically make it happen to our requirement. And the kind of should be happy on that. That's awesome. We like to think that we are a, a great unification tool between facilities and AV and IT. And you know, we can kind of meet in the middle uh, with systems, a lot of times systems that are scalable. So we, we sometimes we'll start in custom and we'll end up in system. And then that system can be repeated, you know, at scale many times. So last uh, thought, are you going to, are we going to see you at Infocom in Las Vegas? Absolutely. Yeah, awesome. Absolutely. Absolutely. Awesome. Look forward to that. That's going to be great. I, there's a, a topic that I'm speaking on and, and I'd love to get your thoughts on it. Multi-camera video conferencing spaces. So uh, capabilities like Zoom's Intelligent Director or Cisco Cinematics or Microsoft Front Row, where we're using multiple cameras. Um, how are you seeing multi-camera systems start to accelerate and permeate the marketplace? Well, that's the in thing right now. And, and clearly the problem that uh, the multi-cam setup is solving is that when you have a, a large conference room, uh, what we've been focusing on all the while has been, a, has been the communication which is between the user and the camera plus display in the front. The moment you switch the conversation between the users in the room, folks on the far end are kind of, they kind of get isolated and the multi-cam setups tend to solve it uh, in a very unique way. My, my initial objections till the time I saw the demo and started engaging with uh, principals uh, to understand how this is set up was the fact that it gave me an impression, Jeff, initially that uh, we probably are going back to the early days of AV where the skill and the capability of the AV engineer or programmer on the ground would bring about the experience to that end. If in case you have multiple conference rooms coming in different parts of the geographies, uh, you will have different experiences. Uh, but uh, what uh, most of the OEMs uh, have done is they have a template which uh, can be repeated and it is not really a factor of a, a skill of engineer for that matter. And on top of it, you have a common platform, whether it is Microsoft IntelliFrame or something similar from Cisco in the form of cinematic meetings or Zoom, they kind of do the magic for you. Uh, I, I'm quite excited about it. We have a couple of installs uh, underway uh, with one of the manufacturers and uh, I, I'm very keen to hear back from my customers in terms of uh, the experience that I'm going to get from it. Yeah. I love it. I love it. I think it, it's an interesting time because what happens in a multi-camera environment and there's a number of manufacturers who are tuning their technology to it. A lot of times it's utilizing AI algorithms to make a determination not only of the speaker and, and the location but how to actually activate zoom in, zoom out functionality to create inclusivity in the rooms. And um, that means that these rooms are going from how we thought about them into studios. We should change the name from room to studio. And uh, people are going to want to, before they go into the room, prepare themselves, you know, to be able to uh, be on camera in any corner. There'll be no, no place you can hide. <laughs> in the space. <laughs> exactly. Right. Exactly. I agree well, it's so wonderful to see you, my friend. I can't wait to see you in Las Vegas. And thank you again for your service to the industry. You're a great partner to Leon. And, uh, and it's been awesome catching up. So we'll talk to you in a little bit. Thank you, Jeff. Thank you so much. Awesome. Love that I'm here. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye. Just hang with me for a second. Thank you. Sure. Can the pain